Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Scratch Cybernetics here, and welcome to part one of this tutorial series, how to make a survive-like game in Scratch. In this tutorial, we'll cover how to make the player art, the player animation, movement, and attack sequence, and also the player bullets. So let's get started. So first, let's delete the cat sprite. And if you look at a regular survive character, you see that it's basically just a circle for a body and two little circles for hands. So I'm going to do basically the exact same thing, except I'm also going to add an outline around the body. Because I honestly think it looks better. Alright, so before we add hands to this, let's actually duplicate this sprite. Because the hands and weapons is going to be a whole different sprite. So just add two little circles for hands. And then once you're done with that, you can just delete the body. <laughs> Alright, so now let's add some movement code. So first drag in a when clicked, add a forever loop and an if then statement. If then key, you could do either arrow keys or WASD. I'm actually gonna use WASD, so if then key A pressed or left arrow, change X by, and before we add any numbers in there, let's actually make two new variables. First one we'll call X, select for all sprites, and the second one we'll call Y, also for all sprites. So as you've probably already guessed, the X and Y variables are gonna control the speed of the character. So drag in a set x2 and a set y2 block in here and let's set it to say 4 and then drag in the x into the change x by but since this is actually the left arrow key or the a key we're actually gonna add in a minus block and do 0 minus x because x is currently set to a positive number so we're always gonna be moving either right or up but if we add the 0 minus it changes it to a negative so now we could duplicate this code for the rest of the movement. Okay, so if we test this, we see that the player moves perfectly. Alright, moving on. If we go on the hand sprite, first drag in a when clicked, add forever loop, and just go to player. And then we also want the hands to be in the front layer. And also add in a forever point towards the mouse pointer. Alright, so now let's add some animation. For the hands, let's set the first costume, name it idle, and then duplicate that. And this is going to be for the left hand, so I'm going to call it L1. And I'm simply just going to move the hand slightly forward, so it's like he's starting to punch. And then name the second one L2, and make it go all the way to its max. And then we could just do the same thing for the right hand. Okay, now back to the code. First, drag in a when clicked, add a forever loop, and an if then else statement. If then, mouse down, then switch costume to costume or L1, and then wait, let's say, 0 0.02 seconds, and then switch costume to L2, and then else we could do switch costume to idle. And then actually let's pull this code out of here and add an if then and then duplicate that and change the L1 to R1 and L2 to R2. Oh and also we could duplicate this and change it to 0 .05 and do switch costume to idle and just add that into both. Alright so now let's make a new variable. L slash R or left hand slash right hand and select for all sprites. Now this variable will simply determine whether the player punches with his left hand or his right hand. So at, drag in an equals block and let's do if equals one and L R if L slash R equals one and an L slash R equals two. Just drag this one in here and the equals two in, into the second block. And then right beneath the mouse downs do set LR to pick random 1 to 2. Alright, so now if we test this, if you press your mouse, you see that the punch is really smooth and there's no specific pattern to which hand it uses. It just picks random, which is perfect. Now that we have his punching animation, let's add some weapons.
Okay, so now that you have a weapon drawn, let's go back to the code and make a new variable. Just call it weapon and select for all sprites. Then let's add an if then else statement and put it over top of the rest of this animation code. So if then weapon equals zero, then it's gonna switch from your weapon back to your hands. But if the weapon equals one, then it's gonna switch back to your weapon. So now let's drag in an if then statement and add an if then mouse down. Then here we could just copy some of this code, except switch costume to AK, and we could get rid of all of this. And then drag in move negative one steps, wait 0.02 seconds, and move one steps back. And we could put that right in here. And for now, just so we could test it, let's add another one clicked. Add a forever loop, if then, key one pressed set weapon to zero else or if then key two press set weapon to one and before we test it let's actually rename the weapon variable to hands because we're gonna have another variable named weapon a little later on alright so now if we test this we see that the player originally starts with his hands and if I press two it switches to the weapon but if you haven't noticed if I press one he switches to his hands but if I press two it waits till I press the mouse to switch to the gun, which is a problem. So let's go back and just simply add here in the else, right, be, right above them if mouse down, just switch costume to AK. All right, so now let's make a new variable, just call it weapon, and then drag in that variable into the, both of the switch costume to AK blocks. And then back to the if key one or key two pressed, Add a set weapon to under the if key two pressed. Set weapon to AK or to whatever your costume is called. So now if we test this, if we press one, it switches to hands, press two, it switches to the gun. And it doesn't really look like much has changed, but this weapon variable will be really useful later on because you know who knows how many weapons you may have. So instead of making individual codes for all the guns, it just we just add in the weapon variable to the switch costume to and it'll switch each weapon costume but it'll use the same few lines of code all right one last thing let's make the player actually able to shoot now if we look at an actual survive character when he shoots we don't see individual bullets all we see are tracers so I'm just gonna draw a straight line and then select the paint tool and select this thing whatever that is and for the first color we could do like a just just white and the second one we'll do a light gray and then we could paint the line that way all right so first let's drag in a one clicked add a forever loop and just do forever go to player point towards mouse pointer and hide and then we could drag in an if then statement let's do if then mouse down and hands equals one which would mean that the player has selected the weapon so if then mouse down and hands equals one create clone of myself and let's do wait say 0 0.06 seconds so now when I start as a clone let's do set ghost effect to zero right now the ghost effect isn't actually set to anything but we're gonna use this a little bit farther down the script so set ghost effect to zero and point towards mouse pointer and then let's do turn add a pick random let's say negative two to two degrees so the tracer will actually turn slightly and then we could add in a repeat let's do like 20 and change ghost effect by five and then also move 10 steps and then after that we can add in a delete this clone and also we need to add a show block so now if we test this if you press your mouse yeah that doesn't look that great the bullets are like basically coming out of the player himself and they're on top of him so let's change that just a little bit first we could go to the costume and move the tracer so that instead of it being in the center we can move it like right about there and then also add in a go to back layer block so now if we test it again Oh, there you go, that looks so much better, and he can move around. But when you move, actually, notice that the hands are slightly lagging behind, and by slightly, I mean not slightly, they're lagging behind a lot. And to fix that, we could just go
go back to the go back to the hands and instead of having a forever go to player we can remove that and add in a message block let's do when i receive say go go to player and then back to the player we could just add broadcast go under every single one of the movement scripts and there you have it well that's the end of this tutorial i hope you guys enjoyed this video and i hope you guys found this video helpful and if you did please hit that like button and also please consider subscribing and tell me what you thought about this video in the comment sections down below also be sure to hit that notifications bell so you know when my next video comes on that's the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one.